Hey, what's up guys? Today, I'll show you a supernatural horror film, Morning Grave. Spoiler ahead, watch out and take care. The movie begins with a teenage boy named Insu, riding a train late at night. He is still in his school uniform and sketching a picture of his mother while on the phone with her. Insu is also holding a strange beaded necklace with a metal disc in the middle in one hand. He reassures his mother that he is doing fine and not getting into any trouble with the other kids at school. It is clear from their conversation that he hasn't seen his mother in a while and that he has a history of not getting along with kids at his age. Insu also tells her that he doesn't see ghosts anymore and that even if he does, he won't get scared. He momentarily gets distracted by a drunk girl on the other side of the train car. The girl is arguing loudly with someone on the phone and is clearly upset. Insu ends his conversation and notices that the disc on his necklace is rapidly turning. This sends chilling hormones down his spine, and when he turns to look at the drunk girl again, he sees a long-haired ghost whispering in her ear. Three of his schoolmates then arrive and start picking on him. Insu flinches when they tease him for seeing ghosts. Obviously, it's an alienating reputation that has caused him to transfer schools often. He tries to deny their claims and is afraid the female ghost will hear about his ability. The train screeches to a stop, and his schoolmates leave along with the drunk girl. It's now just Insu and the ghost left in the train car. He gets a strange feeling on the back of his neck, and when he lifts his head, the ghost is right in front of him. Insu is shaken as he walks home from the station. He warily thrusts the necklace in front of him, as it acts as a sort of paranormal detector. He walks inside the apartment and starts to feel relieved, thinking that no ghosts followed him home. But he's wrong. He realizes too late that the same ghost from the train is now seated on his shoulders and pleading with him to help her. As dawn begins to break, a team of police officers discovers the body of the female ghost along a deserted area. This is all thanks to the tip that Insu gave them under the direction of the ghost. However, the ghost isn't prepared at all to see her dead body, so she howls in horror. Not able to withstand all the grief and pain that ghosts make him experience, Insu calls his shitty uncle, telling him that he wants to live with him. Uncle is surprised and warns him against his decision, since he too can see ghosts, and the two of them together would draw too much paranormal activity. At that very moment, the ghost of a young boy is staring at Insu. Uncle advises his nephew not to pay attention to the ghosts, because if they know that he can see them, they will keep coming to him for help. But Insu is set on his decision, and has already transferred schools to that small town. Afterward, Insu rides a bus to the town, and a pretty girl wearing a school uniform catches his eye and smiles at him. He arrives at the house that morning, and his uncle greets him. He sees talismans all around the house, which are designed to ward off spirits. A photo of his great-grandfather is also displayed on the porch, and Insu reveals that he was a famous exorcist. His necklace even used to belong to his great-grandfather. Uncle and nephew sit down at the table for a cup of tea. Uncle is agoraphobic, which means he is afraid of going outside the house. This is partly due to his ability to attract ghosts. Insu's mother even told him once that his uncle was possessed by a ghost and went inside a women's bathhouse. Insu shares that he also tried living in the US with his mother, but not knowing the language made it difficult for him to communicate with ghosts. After settling in, Insu goes to school, and his new teacher introduces him to his classmates with a stern warning to be nice. A group of bullies led by an attractive female called Ms. Bully lay claim on Insu immediately and push him to sit beside them. In particular, Ms. Bully is very interested in him, but Insu rebuffs her advances. While the class concentrates on the lesson, Insu sees a bloody hand banging on the classroom window. Later that night, he tells his uncle about what he saw, and uncle explains that the bloody hand means that the circumstances surrounding the ghost's death are very gruesome. The next day, Insu finds a quiet spot during lunch break to sketch a blind woman and the ghost dog only he can see. The pretty schoolgirl he saw when he first came to the town appears in front of him, and it becomes clear that she is also a ghost. Insu tries to ignore her at first, but she sees right through him. Two of Ms. Bully's friends, Bully Chul and Bully Ki, also appear and take Insu to a more secluded part of the park. They are angry at him for stealing Ms. Bully's hormone affection. Insu explains that he's not interested in Ms. Bully, but Bully Chul just gets angrier and beats Insu. He throws him to the ground and leans in close, whispering that he went to elementary school with Insu years before. And he knows about his weird fixation on their missing classmate named Yun, which happened when Insu was in elementary school. A flashback reveals that many years ago, Yun went missing, and Insu began seeing her ghost. She insisted that she drowned, and he told the authorities the location of her body. Bully Chul remembers all this, and he threatens Insu that he will tell the rest of the school about his ability if he doesn't stay away from his bully. Later that night, in an abandoned shed, an unknown someone slaughters a dog. 
the dog's collar and a picture of a young student are lying nearby. The next day, the girl in the picture, nicknamed Bully Son, is walking home from school when she gets an eerie feeling that someone is watching her. She talks to her mother on the phone, visibly worried about her missing dog. A few minutes later, Ms. Bully and another Bully fellow surprise her. They get it for fun, but Bully Son is far from amused. She gets home to an empty apartment and hears a loud bang. She investigates the strange noise and sees a small plastic bag hanging from her ceiling. The bag bursts suddenly and showers her with blood. Bully Sung runs to the sink to wash the blood off her face and grabs a knife to protect herself. She then sees the ghost of a girl named Seki and frantically calls her friend. But someone comes up behind Bully Sung and closes the door. At school, Ms. Bully tells her friend that she thinks Bully Sung ran away from home again. Meanwhile, Insu sees the schoolgirl ghost again. In front of them is Bully Chul bullying another student on the soccer field. She asks Insu why he won't do anything about the bullies. Suddenly, the schoolgirl ghost stands up and says that the entity named the mask is nearby, so she runs away in fear. On the other side of town, Bully Sung is lying on the floor, bound and gagged. Someone bangs on the door loudly, and she screams out loud. That night, Insu talks to his uncle about his regrets for not stepping up to bullies. He believes that if he had spoken up, maybe Young's killer would have been caught earlier. Uncle reminds him that he was just a kid at that time, and he did what he could. Furthermore, he was even ostracized by others in town. Insu later reveals to the schoolgirl that the ghost of Young had shown him who her killer was, but he got too scared and never told the others the truth. Because of this, he and his mother left town. This has always been Insu's greatest shame, and now he gathers the courage to speak to Young's family. He apologizes to her father for not being brave enough to identify the killer, and the father assures Insu that he knows he had done his best, and it was already enough that he told them where to find their daughter's body. After the father walks away, Insu and the schoolgirl see the ghost of Young. She smiles and waves goodbye to Insu before disappearing into the afterlife. He finally feels the peace that he is yearning for. Insu and the schoolgirl spend more time together, and romantic feelings begin to grow between them. One day at school, Insu finally gets the courage to stand up to Ms. Bully and stop her from bullying one of their classmates. Meanwhile, Uncle is played by a silent ghost of a woman, who won't tell him what her unfinished business in life is, no matter what questions he asks her. At the same time, Insu is verbally musing about who the mask is. The ghost suddenly speaks and says that the mask is Seki. On the other hand, the bully's fellow, Bully Nara, breaks into the school that night, trying to get her phone back from a teacher's drawer. She goes to the restroom and leaves him waiting in a classroom. However, the mask kills Bully Ki, then stalks for the restroom to terrorize Bully Nara. She sees the face of Seki and dials Ms. Bully to tell her about the ghost hunting her. Moments later, the mask finishes her off too. The next day, the school administrators start to get worried about the string of student disappearances happening recently. Ms. Bully is shaken after hearing Bully Nara's chilling message, but she gets even more surprised when she hears Insu asking their other classmates about Seki. He learns that the girl has committed suicide. However, when he asks for pictures of her, Ms. Bully ends their conversation and says that no one in the class took a picture with her because of her terrible attitude. Later on, one of the students secretly sends Insu a picture of Seki. Insu has no choice but to approach the schoolgirl ghost and ask for more details about Seki. She gets a sad look on her face, and she tells him that everyone in school knows why Seki died and why her ghost roams around in a mask. Later on, Insu confronts Ms. Bully and Bully Chul about their involvement in Seki's demise. He warns them that she's now coming for them all to make them pay. Afterward, with her conscience eating at her, Ms. Bully tells Bully Chul her theory based on a picture she has on her phone, showing the killer with one of the missing girls. She thinks that Seki's father is the one killing their friends as an act of revenge for what they did to his daughter. Ms. Bully remembers that he was looking at them, with anger in his eyes during the funeral. She and Bully Chul then plan to go to his house and confront him. After knowing what Insu discovered, Uncle surmises that the mask must be a product of a split personality ghost due to the traumatic death. Right then, Insu gets a message from Ms. Bully, asking him to come to Seki's father's house. Uncle is alarmed and warns his nephew from going there since he is not prepared. But Insu is determined to help Ms. Bully. Before he goes, Uncle gives Insu one of their great grandfather's daggers that he used in exorcism. Ms. Bully and Bully Chul go inside the shed on Seki's dad's property. It's dark inside, and the door is suddenly locked behind them. They see flashes of the mask through their flashlight beams, and the father creeps up behind Bully Chul and lands a fatal blow to his head. Ms. Bully crawls to a corner and cries as she sees the terrifying masked face of Seki, and her father kills Ms. Bully too. 
Insu gets to the shed too late and sees Stahi's father walk out with a dazed look on his face. He goes inside and is horrified at the sight of his classmates' bodies. He walks to one of the closets and opens it. Inside is the corpse of the mask. And it is revealed that Sekhi is actually the schoolgirl ghost who he had befriended, and that Sekhi and the mask are the same person. A series of flashbacks show what really happened. Sekhi had anonymously reported Ms. Bully to the school administrators for bullying. But Ms. Bully later found out she was the reporter and made her life a living hell. Together with her five fellow bullies, Ms. Bully burns Sekhi with a lighter and cut her hair. Finally, Ms. Bully ordered her to wear a white mask at all times, or else she will die. Day by day, their other classmates just watched as Seki is tortured by Ms. Bully and her friends. Her father grew concerned and wanted to go to the police, but she begged him not to do anything, because they might just retaliate even harder. But she couldn't take it anymore, Seki hung herself. In the afterlife, her ghost split into two personalities, the kind Seki that Insu met, and the terrifying mask who wants to seek revenge on the bullies. What's more, she possesses her father, making him physically do the killings, while the mask goes haunts the bullies before their final moments. But the mask is far from done with her revenge plot. She possesses their teacher, then cuts the power to the school, and locks her classmates inside. Insu gets wind of the mask's plan and races to get to the school. He calls his uncle and urges him to get over his agoraphobia, because he is the only one who knows how to do the ritual to banish a ghost to the afterlife. Insu arrives at the school and tries to plead with the mask. But she has already doused the room with gasoline and is about to set it on fire. Luckily, the good ghost of Seki appears and attempts to stop the evil mask from blowing up the school, but the mask overpowers her good self and makes her disappear. On the other side, Uncle gets to the shed, wearing their great-grandfather's exorcism paraphernalia. He grabs Seki's sleeping ghost and starts performing the ritual using the great-grandfather's sword. Back at the school, the mask possesses one of the other students, but Insu is not sure who is the possessed one. So he pulls out his necklace and whips it around the room. The disc vibrates when it points to one of the students like a GPS ghost detector, and so the mask reveals herself. Insu shows her a sketchbook and reveals his long buried memory. Back in elementary school, he was being bullied by some boys, and a younger Seki defended him and reminded him to be strong. Using this memory, the ghost of the good Seki once again surfaces. But this is all a trick, and the mask is back in control again. Right then, Uncle completes the ritual by stabbing Seki's body with a sword. At the same time, Insu uses the great-grandfather's dagger to stab the mask. Years pass, and the local school eventually becomes a violence-free zone. Insu trains to be a teacher, and the movie ends with him starting his first day at the same high school. However, as he is introducing himself to the class, a ghost of a student starts slowly walking towards him, indicating that his exercising tasks are far from their end. This is Daniel's CC Movie Channel. Stay safe and enjoy your day.